Hi everyone, welcome to the Intelligent Advisor Release 22D, Features and Benefits Deep Dive. I'm Fiona Guys, Principal Product Manager for Intelligent Advisor, and with me is Devin Fifield, VP for hey everyone. Product Development. Yep. Hi Devin. Um, yeah, so today we will be taking you through uh, what's new, what's great, what we've been working on this last quarter. We'll start with a little introduction to Intelligent Advisor, and at the end we will point you out where you can find some more information. Thanks, Fiona. Yeah, so just a super quick refresher for those of you that might be new to Intelligent Advisor. We're all about empowering organizations to delight customers with simple, insightful, and transparent advice. And we do this by enabling people that know the organization's processes and procedures best, those business experts to automate things uh, as part of Oracle's application suite. So that's what Intelligent Advisor is all about. So we're going to dive into a few new things that we've been working on. And Fiona, I think you can give us a bit of an overview. Yeah, so the highlights for this quarter that we really want to pull out for you guys is uh, in three areas. One, improvements to the Oracle integration adapted to support decision services. So those are those web authored rules that you can write directly on your hub. Um, secondly, there we've got some exciting stuff around web authoring interviews, so a fresh new interface for that that Davin will talk you through and give you a little uh, demonstration of. And then the visual builder component that goes with that to allow you to use those in visual builder apps. So we'll dive into these in a little bit more detail. At the end, we've got some other features we can talk to at a high level. Um, but just to go into these in a little bit more, the uh, Oracle integration adapter enhancement that we've made is to be able to call an intelligent advisor decision service uh, midway through an Oracle um, integration process. So currently that uh, adapter was able to call out to um, use a, a web service authored in policy modeling or through an, call an intelligent advisor interview or authored in policy modeling. Now we can call out to those rules that people are running directly on the hub. So you've got your business experts logging into your intelligent advisor hub, writing out logic on what should happen, for example, to um, a service request that has come in or an issue that's been reported to say, okay, what? how are we gonna prioritize that? Um, maybe it's pulling in data from various other places using Oracle integration to know, you know, some bit of background to what's happened here. How are we going to prioritize that? What what teams are going to go to? And what we're going to treat that issue as? Perhaps some resolutions that can be fed back. So this might be an issue that's come in through um, a service desk in some way or through an IoT device directly. But the idea of calculating and, and processing that um, is done today by by um, many using Oracle integration. But you can now do it with those in decision services, um, which gives a really powerful way to kind of isolate some of that decision logic that the business knows. The non-technical folk may know what they want to do and what they want to work with, but they don't necessarily want to put that directly into Oracle integration. So it gives you that nice business-friendly authoring interface with still the constraints in place so that the, your business experts are, are working within a controlled environment for updating and, and defining that business logic of what should happen at that point in the process. So um, I know Oracle yeah. integration is really popular with many of our partners. So there'll be a nice enhancement for many of those folk. Yeah, indeed. And, uh, you know, as you were saying, I mean, Oracle integration is, uh, is a good way of providing that uh, sort of loosely coupled uh, way of um, bringing these, these sort of decision services into you know, various processes that, um, organizations have so uh this this next step so this is really building on what we've already had for quite a long time um with those new web authored you know as we're sort of moving all our web authoring into the all of our authoring into the cloud over time uh, this is another example of how you can now with those web authored decision services use it through oracle integrations so that's great thanks for that fiona so um what we're super excited to talk about as well for 22D is, you know, some of the work we've been doing now for quite a while, uh, sort of continuing on that web authoring vein. Um, so, you know, decision services, they don't have any user interface. They're just all about having some rules, passing some data and getting some decisions out. Now with the web authoring of customer-ended interviews and decision flows, you can now 
uh, start to create these sort of end user facing, agent facing experiences in a web authoring fashion as well. So um, again, this is, uh, you know, our direction here is to make it so that any business expert with access to a web browser can come in and do the authoring that they need to do to update, uh, you know, business logic as they uh, have a need to, you know, as organizational requirements change, as regulations change, whatever it might be. And without having to have a desktop tool, it really sort of democratizes the capabilities here. So what we're talking about here is, um, you know, similar to how policy modeling works today, where you can define a layout of a screen and you can have data integrations that will load data and save data to and from connected applications. We've started to build out what that framework is and how it works now. And this is the first version of those capabilities in the cloud. So um, it's just to run through the highlights. You can design those interviews and those decision fl flows entirely within this browser authoring experience. You can actually also define, uh, and this is something we're really excited about, this idea of schemes. So you can basically set up the palette of things that users will have access to when they're designing these interviews by changing, adding, removing things from the scheme that each interview is created against. And I'll show you how that works when we get into the demo. Um, so this gives you a lot of control over, you know, as it says here, the set of available controls and inputs that you are working with as an author that you let your authors work with. Uh, and for this first release, we've really targeted flexibility and sort of an API first approach. So the idea of um, having uh, API that gives you complete access to everything that this interview engine can do is where we started with our thinking around this. So very much an open architecture that you can work with to deliver any sort of experience that you can imagine, even if we don't happen to have a particular rendering style out of the box with the way we've chosen to give you interviews. Um, to be shown to to end users. So, so as I say, you know, the real benefit of this is that you can engage those business experts to work with and maintain these interviews through any web browser by having this all be available um, uh, as a web-based experience. And this sort of curated palette of controls, including actions and data connections that are specific to you and your business, um, and then to have this whole experience be able to be delivered however you want, whether that's into a mobile application, whether that's into your enterprise portal, whether you're using Angular or whether you're using um, other, you know, React or other uh, web-based frameworks. You've got the flexibility with this just to um, get down into the nitty gritty and, and make it work exactly how you want. So there's a lot, lot in that. Um, so I'll give you a bit of a demonstration of how this looks in a version of the Intelligent Advisor Hub that we have up and running. Um, and so what I will show you here is uh, both a project that has a flow in it as well as a flow scheme. So we'll start off with the flow. So you can see there's a few new categories here. Uh, we've you know got the policy modeling, which is the desktop tool authored things, uh, decision services are the web authored uh, you know decision services <laughs> uh, that we've had now for for uh, several releases. And so now we've got flows and flow schemes. So if we come into this flow here, just to give you a sense of one that we've created earlier, um, and you can see there are you know there's a rich set of controls provided here, and you know. Uh, sort of familiar sort of layout of section, page group, pages. Um, in fact, let me just briefly go back a moment and just something I skipped over. So the way you create these things, you can now create all of these from directly within the uh, the authoring experience here inside the hub. So if I want to create a flow, I just choose flow. I choose which scheme I want to create it in, which workspace. Uh, and similarly, I can create flow schemes. So uh, that was the bit that I meant to show before I dived in. So 
Yeah, so here we are. We've got um, this is basically a transformation of one of the existing policy modeling example projects that we've we've had for for many years, uh, and it's been converted into this web based authoring experience. So, a couple of things I want to highlight uh, as we look at this. Of course, you can see all the different control styles uh, on the left here, and we can if we want to add something, we can just sort of drag it directly in. That'll add a new page, for example. Um, but this is you know, one of the powerful capabilities that Intelligent Advisor has is to drive an interview through what we call a goal. And that is in this first release, even if this web app browser authored, um, you know, interview authoring capability. So here we've basically got this, the student satisfies the basic eligibility requirements for student aid. That's our goal. Where is this coming from? You might ask. Well, we can actually have a look at our data tab. We can sort of paste that in. We can click on this guy and we can see that behind the scenes here, I've actually got a whole bunch of rules. And these rules are what are being used to drive the decision logic of this particular interview. And so by having this particular rule conclusion set as a goal or this particular field set as the goal, uh, it's basically saying, Try and find out all the information you need in order to work out whether this particular student satisfies the basic eligibility requirements or not. And that means it needs to know the answer to all these things. And these things may in turn need answers to other things. And so it's going to work out which questions it need to, needs to ask through this flow by um, you know, driving it towards that goal. So that's uh, that's sort of the, the 101 idea of what goals are all about. But this is a capability we've had in policy modeling for you know, forever basically. Uh, and now the point is that we've got this in our web authored flows as well. So it's a very rich experience we've got here. Um, you can see I've got something called a data action that's gonna load existing student details. This is actually gonna send in a student's ID and it's gonna get back information about them. You can see that I've got the ability to sort of personalize what's gonna be shown. So this is gonna say hi. And then if that person's name was loaded, it will actually show it. And you can see I've got my, usual sort of conditional logic here. So don't show this particular paragraph uh, unless I've actually got a name for the student. So, you know, this is going to be visible unless the existing student's name is null, which means I don't have a value for it. So it's going to hide it if it is null. So this way you can build up conditional visibility of things. Um, and of course, as you go through with the interview, then you'll see other things in here. Um, a nice sort of new little addition is you can put comments in to explain how things work. Um, but otherwise, you know, these are sort of text fields that have been dragged and dropped in here, radio buttons that have been dragged and dropped, um, and they're actually going to get values from um, uh, sort of data that's been populated into this interview as part of the scheme. And I'll, I'll show that a little bit more in a minute. But you can sort of get the sense here. I've got a number of different pages. Um, how this is actually shown is actually completely up to the, the, uh, the runtime experience that you develop. Uh, and we'll, well, we'll talk a little bit about how we do have a first uh, sort of default rendering experience of, uh, of this style of interview in a moment, but at least with sort of the fe this feature that we're announcing in this particular little section, there is no default rendering. It's basically whatever you want. Um, so that's sort of this project. You can see if I sort of go all the way down to the end here, it's going to have another data action. Um, and these data actions just appear like any other control. So I can actually drag these in just as I would any other control. And they'll appear at that point in the flow. And this gives me a lot of flexibility about when and where I, I need to get data from. Um, so you can see in this case, this is actually where it's gonna save data. It's gonna take the information about uh, the student that's being collected and it's gonna return, um, it's gonna you know, send that into the whatever, you know, the system that's saving the student benefit request. And it's gonna get, for example, a reference number back or maybe a message if it didn't work for some reason. Okay, so that's just a bit of an overview of sort of the scheme. You can see this is a very rich experience already. There's a lot of things you can't do <laughs> compared to policy modeling, but it's it's certainly got a lot of capabilities even as it stands today. So the other thing I wanted to show is in order to give you as a, I guess, sort of an interview architect uh, in your organization control over the sorts of things that you're your authors can do, you can set up what's called a scheme. And these schemes are basically the set of controls that you want people to have access to. So that panel on the left that I could drag and drop things into the flow from, this basically is a list of all of those things. And you can see, because this is the scheme that I've created for my student benefits project in this case, 
Uh, I've actually added a couple of data actions. One is that data action for loading the existing student details, and the other one is for saving. Um, and so, yeah, you can see the details about so what's going to be sent in and what's going to be returned, et cetera. Um, the other thing you can do in schemes is you can define global data that's just always going to be there. So this is a little bit like value lists in policy modeling, but it's designed to be uh, even more flexible. So you can see here um, if I've got um, uh, my sort of list of genders, my list of defined enrollment statuses, then I can sort of see what those are. So if I come in here, you can see I've got enrolled, accepted, not enrolled. So these are sort of the default statuses that will be available inside that interview when I use it. Uh, and each of these can have you know display values and things like that that are that are shown inside the interview itself. So a lot of flexibility here. We provide you with um, you know when you create. Uh, one of these flow schemes, we've sort of provide you with some different starting points for different types of interviews or flows that you might want to create. And that will have, uh, that will result in you having a different set of controls by default that you start with. And then you can go to town, you know, add, create, modify, delete them as, as you need to, depending on what your specific requirements are. Um, so you may choose to, you know, get rid of the standard text box um, and give it some custom properties that you want people to say, you know, I don't know, have a big version, a little version that you sort of say, um, you know, it could have them as two different controls in your, in your scheme, for example. Okay, so once you're done with all this, um, you can actually, uh, you can configure, actually, let me just quickly show that too. So in my flow scheme, there is a special little setting you can put in that this is where it's actually going to launch my interview using. So because this is all custom, uh, there is no sort of out of the box interview experience per se. I've actually, one of the things we, one of the things we've done is we've provided a sample out of the box and I've taken that sample directly out of our documentation and I've just um, run it up locally here on my machine. And because I've done that, I can set up my sort of debugging settings for this scheme to just point to that location. Um, and so that's what I've done here. So now when I go into this flow and I choose to run it, it's actually gonna run it using that debugger that I've got set up. And let me just double check something here to check that that's all still running. It looks like it is. Okay, so if I hit run now, it's actually gonna, you can see it's gonna launch it at this local address. So again, this is my interview application. This is something that uh, we provided as a sample, but it's basically whatever you want it to be. So in this case, we've modeled something that's very similar to a standard sort of page at a time interview experience that you might've got through uh, a policy modeling authored interview. So you can see I've got some uh, sort of stage names up the top here. They correspond to the page groups that were created in that flow scheme. But I could have actually chosen not to show them, to show them you know, in a completely different style. I could show them down the side. I could do whatever I want with those. There's no um, restrictions on how you choose to do that. Um, so yeah, if I just sort of briefly show the, how this is going to work, uh, you can see if you know, I've got my options I can choose. You can see here, here the options that I had in my enrollment status. If I sort of click through this a little bit, say I've got four people, $40,000 annual income. So I fall below the, uh, the threshold to get some student aid, click through a couple more screens. And here's my final screen uh, before I get to submitting it, uh, you know, with standard sort of formatted information. Um, if I were to go back now, if I were to sort of change some of my student details, if I were to say, I don't know, I'm, uh, uh, I'm other, or uh, actually, maybe if I say if I've got too much money in my income. All right, so then it's going to say, see how it's it's changed the status of these um, uh, stages to, to to no longer be clickable. I can click and go back to these ones, but these ones are uh, are no longer being uh, shown as something I can click on, and that's because it's worked out that those question screens are no longer needed. Now, unlike what happens in policy modeling today, any information that I'd previously entered on those three screens is no longer part of the interview session. So uh, for those of you that have been working with an intelligent advisor for a long time, you might um, know that uh, the way that this works in policy modeling authored interviews is any information identified on these other screens uh, would have actually been still there 
in the submitted data. Well, that doesn't happen anymore. It is still there. The answers are still there in a way that you can get back to them, um, but they're not there as part of the submitted data. So it's an important and su subtle but important distinction. Um, anyway, I guess long story short, uh, you know, on this flow through, I'm not eligible. If I do say I'm a refugee, then I think I will be able to get through this now that I've selected other as my immigration status. And if I get all the way to the end, it's going to say, here's your reference number. It's going to submit that data action to submit my um, my student benefit request. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's, you know, the, it is a very rich, capable set of things that are in this first release. Um, you know, as you can probably appreciate, there's a lot to, uh, to have to do to bring even you know, half of the capabilities that are in policy modeling today into this cloud-based experience. And I'm super proud of the team and what they've accomplished to get this to this state. Uh, there is a lot you can do with this. It does rely on that API today in order to get that rendering experience going uh, of the sort that we just saw. But what All I right. like about this, Devin, is it just ticks so many boxes for the, the feedback we've had through our uh, sessions we've had with, with customers and partners over the last few years. You know, we've got... Uh, people say, look, I'd, I'd like to expose interview authoring to more of the authors in my organisation, but I don't want to necessarily download and have a Windows desktop install, or I, I want to give them a more constrained experience so they can't just add whatever they want to screens. I want to really tie it down for them. And, you know, that ticks the boxes to be able to set up this kind of yeah. constrained experience for authors to be able to work in while giving them the full flexibility and um, you know, wonders of IA that you kind of see. Um, and then, you've, you know, we've got the other side of things where people say, look, I really love what I, IA can do, but I want to be able to make it look more like my brand. I want to run it on one that, you know, architecture that our organisation is really comfortable with. And, you know, it ticks all the boxes there that you can create that own, that that experience you want to work with. So um, I think people are going to get a lot, a lot of uh, value out of this, a lot of real interest in what, what um, I'm really interested to see what people create. I think it's going to be really exciting. Yeah, I agree, Fiona. I'm, I'm very excited about uh, where people will be able to use this in new and exciting ways. Speaking of which, um, one of the things that we have also been working on in parallel while we were uh, waiting for the paint to dry on <laughs> all those rich capabilities of the web authored flows is a way of rendering them. Now, so I've just spent 10, 15 minutes telling you, we don't provide you with a way to render these flows. Well, we actually kind of already are with what we're calling this Intelligent Advisor flow component. Now, it's a little different, again, from what we've provided previously. It is designed to work very closely with your development team that is building a Visual Builder application to let them hook it up to um, uh, uh, data services, you know, connection, service connections within your Visual Builder experience whenever one of those data actions is fired inside the flow scheme, for example. Um, but really importantly, it is also able to work in an offline mode. So because everything now is this fully JavaScript uh, rendered runtime with all of the, the engine itself is all also able to run in the browser, um, you can now take that full experience and you can basically put it inside any mobile application. So that's what we're targeting with this Intelligent Advisor Flow component for Visual Builder is you can take it, you can drop it into any Visual Builder application. Uh, you can you know, handle those custom data action events and do whatever you want with them. Call REST APIs, call service connections directly um, in Visual Builder that you've got defined whenever those data actions are fired, get the responses back and send them back to the Intelligent Advisor Interview API. It's all handled for you by um, this, this, uh, this flow component. Um, so yeah, very flexible, really lets you take the power of these new next generation flows and bring them into any Visual Builder application. And as Fiona was mentioning, you know, our whole our whole mission here is really to enable experts to update that guidance. They don't need to go into the Visual Builder application. They can just go into Intelligent Advisor. And they can, from any device, they can go into the hub, they can pick open the project, they can modify it, they can update it. And that experience will then flow through into the application without you needing to make any, you know, potentially dangerous changes to, <laughs> to that particular Visual Builder application. Um, and of course, the whole point of this is really to empower 
the people out in the field that are using these devices. So if you're out doing surveys or inspections, uh, you're troubleshooting a particular device of a particular type, need to make sure you're using the right equipment to comply with regulations, whatever it is, uh, our goal is to make sure that you can get the full power of those capabilities uh, in any mobile application, even if that device is offline at that particular point in time that you really need it to be. So um, yeah, we're excited about this. We, we will have more information coming about this, sort of blogs and other things um, for how to use this component. This is really hot off the press, but we are very excited about it. Fiona, I think we've got a few other enhancements too. Do you want to we talk do. us through those? Yes, yes. So um, as usual, we've continued to enhance our integration with Oracle Fusion service. So there are um, a couple of pieces here. The, the main one is that the case object in Fusion service is now supported by the Intelligent Advisor connector so that you can uh, update and create cases. And there's a whole uh, sort of a few pieces to integration there, but if you look up the Fusion case management pieces around um, 22D, you'll see a bit more on that, but create case by interview is one of the key pieces there where you can guide agents through handling um, uh, handling cases and how to respond to issues that come up in those with Intelligent Advisor. Uh, the next three here are, were all actually released in monthly updates to 22C, so you'll get them a little bit earlier if your site's updated to that, um, but they were out in this last quarter. So inclusion reporting via the Hubrest API is one of the enhancements we've made to support our uh, customers who are using more automated administration. So this is where you can use an API to programmatically get which projects are using which inclusions and therefore you might want to trigger some alerts or to notify people if their inclusions are out of date or do some things like this at the, um, as part of your integrated systems. Um, and then the second piece here was around uh, up downloading and updating policy modeling projects from the command line so that you can um, update those projects via inclusion. These pieces allow uh, with the other capabilities we have to do a complete round trip of updating inclusions in your policy modeling programmatically if you want to. So you can now um, regularly ping the hub to see if any projects have changed. You can see what they're included in and then for those included projects, you could download those projects from your workspace, update those changes, uh, the inclusion changes as part of the command line um, tools that we have available and then uh, re-upload those and redeploy those projects. So you could automatically update your inclusions if you wanted to automate that process now as a complete end-to-end uh, -end, uh, pieces in place. And then finally, we, we're constantly improving our visual builder interview component to allow you to embed interviews in Visual Builder. The uh, minor tweak we've done to uh, that this quarter was to allow it to inherit the styling from its uh, page that it's embedded within. So you can um, use your, your branded styling from your, your main page there within your Intelligent Advisor interview if you want to. For more information on these features and everything else we're doing in Intelligent Advisor, um, as usual, you can uh, check out the Intelligent Advisor documentation. You can uh, jump on YouTube and have a look at these and more videos. Um, and most importantly, I think you can come along to some of our uh, forums where you can have a chat with Devin and I, or you can uh, jump on to the uh, feedback forums we have available for you to provide some input or just follow what we're doing on, on Twitter and other streams to see what's coming out and what's changed. You can get all of that information and more through our Stay Informed link there. And that's it for our session today. Please do reach out to us through any of those channels. And uh, we're always happy to hear your feedback and hopefully you'll see one of your suggestions in an upcoming session. Thanks, Fiona. Thanks, everyone.